found him. We're in a melee club. Oh, time to look at this. Look at this. Look, what are you doing? What the f are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, a father from upstate New York being forcibly tossed from a school board meeting this week after he refused to wear a mask. Joining us once again, the founder and CEO of Stock Swoosh and a resident of New York, Melissa Armo. Thank you for sticking around. So what are your thoughts on New York as we see other states, Democratic primarily states, uh, follow suit and get rid of their mask mandates, but kind of leaving it up to the school boards to make a decision there? I think it's problematic, but I think that people have had COVID exhaustion, particularly in New York City and New York State. For a long, long time now. Again, if taking the vaccine or wearing masks would have stopped COVID altogether, I think people would be happy to continue wearing masks. But the problem is that it hasn't stopped the spread of COVID. And we have a variant that's still out now. We're going to have other variants. And I think it's up to people, their individual choice, if they want to wear the mask or not. I think what we've done to kids is really terrible because now we've actually scared kids. A lot of kids are scared thinking that they're going to get sick if they don't wear the mask. And that's terrible. And I think that we've got to just move on from this and find a way to just survive. I mean, there's a lot deadlier diseases yeah. out there. Cancer is deadly. People die from cancer. I think more people die every year from cancer than anything else. And, and we still somehow find a way to continue as a society. While I think it's horrible, the number of people that died, particularly in New York State, most of them were the elderly and in the nursing homes. And those people can continue to mask up or they could continue to mask up in the nursing homes, but not the rest of society. Well, speaking of kids, uh, kids may be afraid of not having friends. Some may be afraid of not having friends if they don't get the vax. So a New York middle school put on a holiday play in which fifth through eighth graders saying it's safe to vax. And if your friends don't vax, then they ain't no friends of mine. Uh, kind of reminiscent of that 80s song that we were playing, the safety dance. Uh, but all jokes aside, uh, a mother who attended this uh, clearly upset, shared some recordings with our news partners at Just the News, and I encourage our viewers to check that out at justthenews.com. But um, do you think plays with messages like these are appropriate for school children? I don't think a lot of things that the school boards have done are appropriate across the country in the last few years, but that's a different story. I think that, you know, children, unfortunately, sometimes can be very mean, and they're going through a growing process, and, it, you know, people are developing at different rates and at different ages. And it's been a tough year or a tough two years, I should say, for children and not only that for parents, because they really don't know everything that's going on during the day at school. Plus, remember, they've had this remote learning uh, that was a huge part of the last two years of their learning. So I, I don't think that these things are a good idea. Parents have to speak up. You've seen them speaking up. Well, uh, we just uh, spoke about New York's mask mandates. Now get this, according to a new study published in Nature Communications, scientists have found a new COVID variant, they say, believed to have originated in New York City sewage last year from rats. Meanwhile, French President Emmanuel Macron refusing to take a Russian COVID test at the request of the Kremlin upon his arrival earlier this week to see Russian President Vladimir Putin, according to Reuters, he didn't want to take it because he didn't want Russia to have possession of his DNA. And speaking of COVID, shock and outrage after this viral video shows a nearly 80-year-old grandpa, great-grandpa, in fact, being arrested. For what? Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? Hey, hey, that's assault. I've got it all on video. Yeah, he failed to ID. You're back. Hey, hey. Get back. Stop get back. You get back. We're back. We're filming. Get back. We're doing our part. So what you just saw there was him getting arrested by Canadian police for failing to show an ID. But initially he was pulled over for simply honking his car horn and giving the thumbs up in support of the Freedom Convoy. Uh, also joining us in addition to Melissa, we want to welcome in Mike Murphy. Uh, he is a gubernatorial candidate for Minnesota. Thank you for joining us here on News On. Pleasure to have you. It's heartbreaking to see, I mean, this this sweet little old man being arrested for doing something that, frankly, people do every day. Uh, you know, hey, Canada has a right to have its own laws. But what is your reaction to this? 
we're living in some very, very scary times right now, um, not just in America, but the world. I mean, we've seen what uh, the country of Australia has done to its uh, citizens the last few months. And of course, uh, America is no better, and especially Canada. And I feel terribly sorry for what everybody's going through right now. We have all become just paranoid with COVID and these mandates and following the rules of the government. And I think it was Thomas Jefferson who said, uh, when tyranny um, becomes law, rebellion becomes duty, and that's where we're at right now. Um, I'm the mayor of the city of Lexington here in Minnesota, but also running for governor. But we have crazy mandates here in Minnesota, and the Democrats aren't actually looking at the COVID numbers. They're looking at their polling numbers, and that's why they're starting to drop all these mandates. But Minneapolis and St. Paul instituted max or vaccine mandates and mask requirements to do business in Minneapolis and St. Paul, the two biggest cities in the entire state. So that's why uh, I made my city a health freedom sanctuary city to let my uh, my city employees, my businesses know, the restaurants and everybody that lives in my community that we're not going to do that to you. We're not going to segregate you by your vaccine status and where you are uh, with, with COVID. And that's unconstitutional for these people to do this. And I stand with the people of Canada. I believe in the uh, trucker convoy and what they're doing. And you see uh, Justin Trudeau, he's uh, doing everything he can by stealing the GoFundMe money and even threatening to use military force to uh, bring in these citizens up there. And uh, it would never fly here in America. And that's why we have our Second Amendment rights to protect ourselves from a tyrannical government. Well, speaking of America and the convoy, uh, word is it's coming. Take a look at what our panelists had to say the other day. Ted, what do you think? about the likelihood of this actually happening there. There are Facebook pages, as I mentioned, talks about it happening in California. Do you think it's gonna come here? Without a doubt. Um, and I've been in contact with them that are organizing it. Um, they will be coming through my hometown of Denver, Colorado, here probably the middle of March, and they've asked me to be one of the speakers at the event. Um, I think this is a, a, a huge message to the politicians that work for us, not the other way around, that um, these mask mandates, these vaccine mandates, these vaccine passports are out of control. So there was just a rumor that they may come here. Now you just heard uh, Ted Harvey there in Colorado saying, no, he's invited. Um, so there's talk that we could see some action here in the United States, protests very similar to the ones that we've been following there in Canada as soon as this Sunday. Melissa, uh, what do you anticipate to happen? I hope that they do do it. I've been watching what's been happening and following some of the media organizations in Canada, which I've never done before in my life, just to see what's really happening there. And I think that it's going to have to happen here in order for there for some change, some real serious change to take place. Because Dr. Fauci, all along the way from day one, has continued to change the goalpost when we're ever going to be able to get back to normal. And then you have states like New York, while they've lifted the mask mandate, Who's to say they wouldn't put it on again in two months? They haven't lifted the vaccine passport. You can't go anywhere in New York City without proof of a vaccination, and you need two shots, and you need an ID. It has devastated New York City's economy, and it's never going to get back to normal unless they stop it. Tourists aren't coming here. People have had enough. While the rental markets have gone up and people have come back, they're not really going out in their homes. So something drastic needs to happen because the administration doesn't get it. One plus one equals two, and they just don't get it. People have had enough of this. And if people can't get their goods, if they go into the grocery store and there's nothing there, it's really going to affect the administration. They're going to have to answer for that. They're going to have to say why. And the problem is, are they going to shut down the Facebook pages? Are they going to shut down the funding? Are they going to arrest people? I mean, that is what is a concern. What could happen to these truckers if they go out there and take a stand? But I think if they don't do this, we'll never see the end of this. Well, speaking of shutting down websites, Republican lawmakers are now taking matters into their own hands by writing to GoFundMe executives this week, expressing their concerns over what they call the crowdfunding platform silencing of the Canadian protest and its contributions, who they say are, quote, peacefully challenging the science and merits of some of these COVID mandates. We're going to ask both of you to weigh in on that when News On returns. We'll be right back. 